Hello everybody, my name is Mystery, and if you haven't heard the news, yesterday a federal senator, Lydia Thorpe, heckled King Charles at an event yesterday at Parliament House in Canberra and it was absolutely golden. It is really hilarious to see how such a respectful occasion was brought back down to earth by an indigenous woman who is trying to make a very bold statement and what is happening as a result of that is she is just being swept under the rug by the political establishment and the mainstream media. This just highlights the absolute hypocrisy in this country. We pretend like we care about indigenous people. We do all of the niceties and all of the formalities. We do our acknowledgements to country. We make sure they're included in events, but when an actual indigenous person wants to make a statement in an appropriate setting, in a political environment, we are told that this is inappropriate behavior and we shouldn't give it any attention. So what we're going to look at, okay, is the actual footage of what happened. So you've got some contact and then we're going to see what the ABC has to say about it. Our Australian broadcaster. Okay, as unbiased as always. There's the king. You are not our king, you are not sovereign. What she was talking about really quickly, she was just talking about you stole from us in terms of our bones. Um, she's talking about artifacts that have actually been taken and are being held over in the UK. And, you know, she believes that these things should be returned to the First Nations people. Interesting. A genocidalist. It's a good term. Remember that one. Is from another angle. This is not your land. We don't want to make a mount. You are not our king. She is right. He is not our king. That is such a powerful statement. I think it is very true. We have this very antiquated notion in this country that we need to hang on to our ties to Britain for some reason. We, they are not essential anymore. I'll get to that, but I really want to highlight she has what she has said there is true. It's very true for Indigenous people, but it's true for everyone that calls Australia home. We have no ties to the British anymore. And I call that for a republic. We need to cut them out of the picture and have our own sovereignty. It is essential in the 21st century and it will be essential for our survival as a nation, as a sovereign nation, in order to kind of grapple with what will be coming geopolitically for the rest of the century. We need to be able to speak for ourselves and define ourselves as an independent populace. And what she's talking about ties very well in to the whole Republic conversation. But like what they cut out of this piece and what I've seen in other ones, at the end, when she's leaving, she's screaming out the colony. That's right, the colony. So yes, she's been Lydia Thorpe. Okay, let's just talk about her. Lydia Thorpe, she's a controversial figure, okay? Whether you like her or you don't, okay, she is a loose cannon. She's done some pretty edgy things in the Senate. And, you know, she obviously, well, yeah, obviously speaks her opinion. But, like I said, whether you like her or hate her, what she did was incredibly ballsy, okay? That was a very, very formal and ceremonial 
occasion for the king that is gracing us with his presence at the moment and she 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 turned her back to him while he was speaking she let him finish speaking and then said her piece walking right up to the front and then physically backtracking a little bit as she was you know kind of being imposed upon by security guards but like it took a lot of bravery to be able to make such a statement like that activism is not hard uh, sorry is not easy it's hard to pull off in that nature and, sh and she would have been thinking about what she was going to do a lot she would have really been considering like how to pull that off properly and she did it she she voiced her opinions and made i think a very powerful statement again whether you like her or not what she's done there is rather powerful and you will see the media is not really giving it any attention which is again part of the great hypocrisy in this country it's nice to acknowledge first nations people as long as it's done in the way that is okay and follows the codes of practice anything outside of that completely unacceptable it's an out of a molehill on the senator lydia thorpe contribution See, i don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill basically this is a nothing what she's done means nothing to us and we don't want to give it any more attention the only type of indigenous things that we want to give attention to is, is the stuff that we deem appropriate as the political establishment and the mainstream media not the things that they want to talk about that stuff is beneath us we saw it at the end of our videotape compilation interjections that included give us a treaty we want treaty in this country it's not your land it's not your land you're not my king was this anticipated um well I, I don't have any more insight than you do, Greg. Into what a stupid question to ask someone. Was this anticipated? Look, like I said, she's controversial. She's done some pretty, you know, she's made some bold statements in the Senate and stuff like that. So they, they probably would have expected something to a certain degree. But like, you know, why ask this guy? He's like, look at the little title down there. He's a labor front bencher. Like, what's he going to know about this? Seriously. Uh, what is the, the minds of other senators or other members? But I thought that behaviour was um, pretty inappropriate. I think it alienated a lot of people and I think most of the Australian public expect that uh, their members and senators uh, behave with dignity, especially at these formal state occasions. No, they don't. Okay, this is the great divide between the political world and the rest of the people in this country and people in democratic countries all over the all over the world is that like you guys live in this fantasy world of ceremonies and procedures and we actually want people that represent us on real issues, like real people. And so like if she is representing a demographic in Australia that is, has real concerns about the monarchy and their involvement in, she described it as him as a, the king, as a genocidalist. And if they are really concerned about the genocide of their people, that she is actually expressing her political views as a representative of these people but because it doesn't fit your mold and like i said before it doesn't fit nicely into an acknowledgement of country or something procedural like that then you know oh it's disrespectful she shouldn't have done it how dare she really she's alienating people she's just making you all feel uncomfortable and that's the point of making a statement like that it's the spark of broader conversation and like i hope it does but the way that they're handling it is just to sweep it under the rug like it never happened unfortunately what they are doing is undermining the statement that she's made would there be any sanction worth contemplating particularly by the other place the senate you're not a, a member there obviously but uh, would that be worthy of examination in your view well, um i don't i can't speak for the senate they are in change in charge of their own members and their own disciplinary procedures but i think really what I hope is that this doesn't detract from the fact that it was an incredibly warm reception. So like basically he's saying that she has been disrespectful. And so we need to basically ignore the fact that she was democratically elected and cut her out of her duties. That's his solution. 
when somebody makes a statement, a political statement in a political forum that is outside what is standard procedure, that they should have their elected. They're, this is an elected person. They should have their functions taken away from them. That's their, that's their authoritarian response to an indigenous person making a statement. Can you see the his hypocrisy in this country? It is just so blatant and in your face and no one says anything about it. Uh, for the, uh, the King and the Queen, uh, there was clearly a lot of people in the room who were really honoured to have been invited to that. So much boot occasion. licking for the As monarchy. Said, the first time that we've had a King makes of me Australia, sick. in fact, visit Australia. And what we saw in the King's remarks were his warm affection for this country, a country that he came here as a student, uh, he visited 17 times, and I think he really went out of his way not just to talk about the causes that are important to him, such as climate change, yep. but also to talk about uh, the, uh, his great appreciation of the respect that First Nations Australians have shown him on those visits. Oh. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's all about him. They've shown him respect. How nice of them to show respect to him. And like she didn't show respect, so she's going to be cut out of the conversation. Now, like I've said already, okay, love her or hate her. This is a good statement to make because it draws attention to uncomfortable matters that obviously the political establishment and the mainstream media just don't want to talk about. They don't want to talk about indigenous issues that indigenous people want to talk about. They just want to talk about the nice stuff. And like the king has come here and graced us with his presence. The first time, apparently, he just said that a king has ever come to this country. And like our king at the moment, King Charles, has come here on a vacation. And so like he's just talked about like how everyone's been really nice to him, including indigenous people. And so like I don't see the importance of having a relic from the past like that around anymore. Like there is absolutely no political reason for having a king in this country or structured into our constitution somehow. We should have our own sovereignty. It is going to be very, very important as we progress through the 21st century to actually have some real sovereignty in this nation. And if we can get that through a two-pronged approach of getting it done for the rights of indigenous people and the rights of every person that calls this country home anyway, I think that's going to be an absolute necessity. The geopolitical world is changing significantly and we are in a very important strategic position in the Asia region, okay? And in order to make sure our interests here are protected properly we need to let go of the monarchy that is on the other side of the world and can't even handle its own bloody problems anyway and we need to look to our regional our regional strategic partnerships in order to protect ourselves and we won't be able to do that unless we have our own independence this is why we need a republic and we can kill two birds with one stone we can look after indigenous issues properly and we can look after our own strategic interests properly if we are independent we don't need the uk anymore and she's highlighted this perfectly that's all i'm going to say on this one but i really wanted to speak about it and i'm like you know like i said lover or hater she did something brave and it was a very interesting statement tell me your thoughts please in the comments and if you like this give it a like you know the procedure and please remember until next time i am you are we are a mystery